Welcome to our series on Earth's mass extinctions. Throughout Earth's history, there have been five major mass extinction events, known as the Big Five. In this series, we'll explore when and why these events occurred to better understand what might happen in the future. What is a mass extinction? Extinctions are a natural part of evolution, occurring regularly over time. Typically, around 10% of species are lost every million years, 30% every 10 million years, and 65% every 100 million years. This background rate of extinction is balanced by speciation, the creation of new species. Mass extinctions, however, are periods when extinction rates far exceed this background rate. These events are defined by their magnitude, at least 75% of species going extinct, and the rapidity with which they occur, typically within 2 million years. The Big Five Mass Extinctions Over the past 500 million years, Earth has experienced five major mass extinction events. First, the End Ordovician, occurring approximately 444 million years ago. Then came the Late Devonian, approximately 360 million years ago. The End Permian followed this, approximately 250 million years ago. Then the End Triassic, approximately 200 million years ago. And finally, most recently, the end Cretaceous, 65 million years ago, most commonly remembered as the event that wiped out the dinosaurs. In today's episode, we'll delve into the first of these significant events, the end Ordovician extinction. Stay tuned as we uncover what caused it, which species were affected, and how life on Earth was forever changed. The Ordovician period, spanning from about 485 to 444 million years ago, was a time of remarkable geological and biological development. This era is known for its extensive shallow seas and flourishing marine ecosystems. During the Ordovician, Earth's climate was predominantly warm and stable, with high levels of carbon dioxide creating greenhouse conditions. Much of the planet was covered by shallow, tropical seas, which were teeming with life. These seas were the result of high sea levels, driven by the lack of polar ice caps and active tectonic movements that created vast continental shelves. Seasonal variations were minimal, and the warm waters allowed for the proliferation of marine life. High sea levels meant that many areas now covered by land were submerged, creating extensive, shallow marine habitats ideal for diverse ecosystems. These conditions also led to high rates of sedimentation, which helped preserve many of the fossils we find today. The oceans were bustling with a diverse array of marine organisms. Trilobites, brachiopods, and the first jawless fish were among the dominant life forms. Coral reefs began to form, providing habitats for countless species. Algae and early plants also began to appear, contributing to the oxygen levels in the atmosphere and supporting the marine food web. These marine ecosystems were incredibly complex and dynamic. Coral reefs with their intricate structures supported a variety of life forms, from filter-feeding brachiopods and bryozoans to predatory cephalopods and early fish. The reefs acted as both habitats and protection, fostering a rich biodiversity. Plankton thrived in the nutrient-rich waters, forming the base of the food chain and sustaining larger organisms. The stability and productivity of these ecosystems were unparalleled. Nutrient cycling, predator-prey interactions, and symbiotic relationships created a balanced environment where life flourished. This period was a pinnacle of marine biodiversity, with intricate food webs and highly specialized organisms. However, this thriving world was on the brink of a monumental crisis. A series of events would soon lead to the first major mass extinction in Earth's history, bringing an abrupt end to the Ordovician's vibrant ecosystems. As the Ordovician period drew to a close, life on Earth faced an unprecedented challenge. The first major mass extinction in Earth's history was about to unfold. The end Ordovician extinction occurred in two main pulses, each dramatically reducing the diversity of life. The first pulse happened around 445 million years ago, primarily affecting species in shallow marine environments. The second pulse followed about one million years later, compounding the ecological devastation. The first pulse of extinction was driven by a sudden glaciation event. Massive ice sheets formed over the supercontinent Gondwana, causing global temperatures to plummet. This glaciation led to a dramatic drop in sea levels, 
reducing the shallow marine habitats that many species depended on. The sudden glaciation is believed to have been caused by several interrelated factors. The positioning of the supercontinent Gondwana over the South Pole created conditions favorable for ice sheet formation. Additionally, extensive volcanic activity led to the weathering of silicate rocks, which drew down atmospheric carbon dioxide levels, reducing the greenhouse effect and cooling the planet. This combination of geographic and atmospheric changes set the stage for rapid glaciation. As the glaciers expanded, sea levels fell by as much as 70 meters. Shallow marine environments, which were rich in biodiversity, were transformed into exposed land or deeper, less hospitable waters. This rapid loss of habitat was catastrophic for many marine species, particularly those adapted to shallow, warm waters. The second pulse of extinction was associated with changes in ocean chemistry. As the glaciation event ended, glaciers melted, causing sea levels to rise again. This sudden influx of cold, oxygen-poor water disrupted marine environments, leading to widespread anoxia. Anoxic waters, devoid of oxygen, made it impossible for many marine organisms to survive, hammering the final nail in the coffin for countless species. Evidence of the end Ordovician extinction is found in the fossil record. Rapid changes in fossilized marine communities, along with shifts in sedimentary layers, indicate a sudden and catastrophic event. The disappearance of certain species and the appearance of extinction markers, such as black shales and glacial deposits, further support this conclusion. Among the hardest hit were the trilobites, brachiopods, graptolites, and conodonts. These species, which once thrived in the warm, shallow seas, faced massive die-offs as their habitats shrank and environmental conditions deteriorated. Entire ecosystems collapsed as key species vanished. The extinction event caused profound changes in marine ecosystems. The loss of key species led to the collapse of complex food webs. Recovery was slow, taking millions of years for biodiversity to rebound and for new ecosystems to stabilize. This period of recovery saw the emergence of new species and evolutionary adaptations. The end Ordovician extinction was driven by a combination of glaciation, sea level changes, and shifts in ocean chemistry. This multifaceted crisis serves as a stark reminder of how quickly environmental changes can impact life on Earth, dramatically altering the course of evolution. After the end Ordovician extinction event, Earth's ecosystems were left in a state of limbo. The dramatic loss of biodiversity and the collapse of complex food webs created a barren and desolate marine environment. Earth remained in this state of ecological limbo for several million years. It took approximately five million years for the planet to begin showing significant signs of recovery. During this period, the environment gradually stabilized, allowing life to slowly re-establish itself. The first organisms to take advantage of the recovering environment were typically small, hardy, and adaptable. Among them were various species of algae and simple, opportunistic invertebrates. These early colonizers played a crucial role in rebuilding the marine ecosystems by forming the foundation of new food webs. Coral reefs, which had been devastated during the extinction event, began to re-establish themselves. The new reefs once again provided habitats for a variety of marine life. Slowly but surely, biodiversity increased as more complex and specialized organisms returned. Over time, new species evolved to fill the ecological niches left vacant by the extinction. Among these were new types of brachiopods, bryozoans, and mollusks. Early vertebrates, such as jawless fish, also began to diversify and expand their presence in the marine environment. The period following the extinction saw a series of adaptive radiations where surviving species rapidly diversified to exploit new ecological opportunities. This led to the emergence of new predator-prey dynamics, symbiotic relationships, and complex ecosystems reminiscent of pre-extinction times. By around 10 million years after the extinction event, Earth's marine ecosystems had largely stabilized. A new equilibrium was reached, characterized by a mix of both familiar and novel species. This recovery period set the stage for future evolutionary developments and the continued diversification of life as the Earth witnessed the birth of the Silurian period. 
Understanding these past events helps us appreciate the intricate balance of our planet's biodiversity and the potential impacts of current environmental changes. From the depths of extinction to the dawn of new life, the story of the end Ordovician event is a testament to the enduring power of evolution and the unpredictability of Mother Nature. Stay tuned for the next episode in this series as we explore the second entry of the Big Five major extinction events, the Late Devonian. That's all for this video. If you've learned something new, hit the like button and share with your friends. You could also subscribe for more answers to your thoughts of nature. Please leave a comment for what you would like to learn about next. Thank you.